cool. I get to look at a picture of myself. You know, they said, Tom, you're coming on after, they said after VOG on the little script we got. And, and I looked at the VOG, go, what's VOG? They go, voice of God. So now I know Brad Keywell is God. This is a huge discovery, man. This is cool. How are you? Thank you all for coming out today. Um, it is going to be an incredible show. We have five amazing speakers, entrepreneurs, just interesting people, and I think you'll really enjoy it. It's all about, it's all about the Benjamins. And um, just giving the last couple people a few seconds to come on in here. So my name is Tom Sosnoff. I, um, I've been uh, Chica in the Chicago money world for a pretty long time now, almost 33 years. Uh, started at the Chicago Board Options Exchange, built Thinkorswim, and now we're building an amazing uh, financial media company called Tasty Trade. So a couple weeks ago, I think it was two and, a, two and a half or three weeks ago, I'm on a, I'm getting on a flight. I do an eight, I, we do eight hours of live programming a day. I do five hours of speaking on the internet every single day, along with live shows around the country every other weekend. So I hop on a plane to go out to um, Arizona. I have a show in Scottsdale, and there's about a thousand people there, and I got to run out on a Friday night, and I'd been in the off, been working since about three, four in the morning that Friday morning. So I get on a plane heading out to Arizona. It's about um, uh, probably six o'clock in the afternoon from O'Hare. And I get on the plane, and there's a guy sitting in my seat. And so I go, that's, that's my seat. And, and this guy looks at me, and he goes, um, yeah, but I was, hoping, um, I was hoping we could maybe negotiate. Now, have you ever watched on a plane before and somebody asks you if they want to negotiate? Because I had the aisle seat, and he had the window seat. And he gets up, and he looks at me, and he says, um, I thought maybe, you know, I thought maybe I can do something for you. Now, I kind of appear homeless <laughs> much of the time. I'm not really, but I appear it. At least I can, let's put it this way. I'm one of the few people in Chicago that I can pull this off. You know, and, and so I think he's thinking I got the free upgrade, the whole deal, and he can buy the aisle seat from me. And because obviously he, I, I learned later he'd been traveling for a long time. So he takes out his wallet and he looks at me and he goes, it's all about the Benjamins. This is right after I had got this gig to speak here. And he goes, it's all about the Benjamins. And I'm like, ah, oh, this can't be happening. This is not going to be the topic of my conversation when we get up in front of a couple hundred people. So he looks at me, and, he, and the first thing he does is he takes his, his, his wallet's full of money, but it's not all American money. Like, it's money from multiple countries. I don't even know, Korea, all these other countries. And he pulls out a $20 bill. Now, I'm not sure. Like, I've been trading since 1980. Okay, this is the meeting that I'm kind of used to negotiations and, and certain arrangements. The guy pulls out a $20 bill. I go, uh-uh. Now, the whole line is behind me on the plane because I'm the third person in, and I'm fairly wide. Okay, it's hard to sneak by me. So, so I look at this, he pulls out a 20, I go, mm-mm. He pulls up a 50, and I'm like, uh-uh. He goes, what's it gonna take? A Benjamin. And I'm thinking, this is too coincidental, it's too weird. And, and I go, listen, dude, you don't have enough money. And he looks at me, he goes, I don't have enough money? I go, you don't have enough money. So he goes, point to my, in my wallet how much it's gonna take to get you to move. And I go, this, like I wanted his whole wallet. So I go, this, because he keeps pulling one up. I go, this much. And he looks at me and he goes, he moves over the seat. Now, the funny thing about this is, as we're doing that, I sit down, and this is one of these flights that has direct TV. So I look at the direct TV, the monitor, and it's got CNBC playing. Now, I'm building a network that competes, obviously, with CNBC and other financial networks. So that's kind of my biggest nightmare. So now I'm next to a drunk guy that just flew over from Korea. And he's been on a plane for 24 hours. He's been drinking at least a couple drinks an hour. And I'm watching CNBC, and he looks at me, and he goes, what do you do? And I go, you know, I'm a, um, and the funniest thing is, we created a show for CNBC about finance. It was called Option Action. We built it a couple years for them, and we gave it to them. And they, that show was on. And it's sponsored by Think or Swim, which is the company I started. So I, so I work for them. Even though I don't work for them anymore, I was speaking for them. I go work for them. And he looks at it and he goes, and he goes, oh, that's cool. And then my bag said think or swim. It's, they're on the TV. He's watching the TV. He goes out, and I'm just watching him. He's on his own for a couple of seconds. He's trying to talk to me, but I'm ignoring him. And he's like, I can't believe you didn't take the money. I can't believe you didn't take the Benjamin. He keeps using the line, Benjamin, Benjamin, Benjamin. So we're sitting there, and he's he's getting antsy. He's like, I had to use the aisle, I had to take the aisle because I had to go to the bathroom. And now you've got me in the window. 
So the plane starts to taxi, and all of a sudden he's Googling me, and he's Googling Thinkorswim, and a picture of me comes up. So he shows me his iPad, because we haven't taken off yet. He goes, you prick, you slow played me. You, you, I know why you didn't take the money from me. And he's got a picture of me sitting next to him. So now he waves down the stewardess, or the, the flight attendant, and the two flight attendants. He waves them down, because he has to go to the bathroom. And as we're taxiing, they go, no, you cannot, you cannot get up. They get back, back down in your seat. So he keeps threatening to get up to go to the bathroom. And the flight attendants, all three of them, come to, because the, they had pushed a button, it was like a code red. And they go, they looked at me and they said, they said, keep your friend in line. <laughs> or we're going to tell the pilot to go back to the gate and get rid of you two guys. I go, I just met this guy like 20 seconds ago. I don't even know who he is. And then this guy goes, he's smart. Tom, we work together at Thick or Swim. We've been friends for X number of years. And then, and then they all they go, listen, we don't care what you guys are up to, but no more words out of you. And then they walk back to their seats, and he looks at me and he goes, you should have taken the Benjamin. <laughs> anyway, we have. Oh, by the way, that flight got diverted to Albuquerque. I was on the flight with him for eight hours. <laughs> when we finally landed in Scottsdale, he goes, listen, you're a good dude. You've been fun all night. He goes, I'll drive you to your hotel. I go, you've had 40 drinks in the last 40 hours. I'll walk to my hotel if it's 20 miles. I'm not getting in the car with you. Anyway, we've got an amazing show. Um, and just enjoy it. And we're going to be back and forth all day. I think this is going to be great. Thank you.